It sounds like Senate Republicans are set to block this bill on Wednesday. Here's what I do not get. They want to hold an impeachment vote for Mayorkas for enforcing bills that they don't like. And at the same time, they want to block an immigration bill that will solve some of those very same rules that they don't like. Stephanie, it's a really, really tough situation to understand. But really, the, the bottom line here in the common denominator between what House Republicans are doing with trying to impeach um, DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas and what the Senate Republicans are now threatening to do, which is block a bill that they negotiated, is Donald Trump. Um, <clears throat> we saw the former president now calling this border security bill that has been negotiated by Democrats and Republicans for weeks now a, quote, trap. This is really former President Donald Trump saying he doesn't want President Biden to have anything to sign that even looks like he's handling the issues at the border. And as a result, it keeps the crisis at the border as an issue in 2024. So you have Republicans who in some ways are really looking at Donald Trump for their cues for what to do next. And you have someone like Speaker Mike Johnson who's saying, I'm going to look at the bill, but within hours is saying it's dead on arrival. So what you really see here is that this is a bill, even though it's the most conservative border security bill that we've seen in, in modern history, it's a bill that Republicans likely are not going to pass. And it's one that even Democrats are, are angry about, which tells you just how far Democrats went and President Biden went to try to give Republicans what they wanted in order to get something passed. OK, but let's name okay. names, Yamiche. I get why Donald Trump wants to block it and why Mike Johnson wants to serve Donald Trump. But Mitch McConnell appointed James Lankford as the person to negotiate this bill. And now it's being reported that McConnell is giving Republicans the green light to block it. It's a very, very confusing, confusing thing to understand. I will also say that there are Senate Republicans who are now in the Senate, of course, who have been critical of Mitch McConnell for making any sort of deal with Democrats. So these are people who already didn't want Mitch McConnell to be the speaker, um, didn't want him to be someone who is going to be um, leading, rather, Republicans in the Senate. He didn't want him to be the majority leader in the Senate. But these are still, it in some ways, still shows you the tension that Republicans have to deal with, which is that on, on the one hand, you have Republicans who want to get things done, who want to actually get some of these long generational goals that they had, including getting rid of immigration court judges, including speeding up the asylum process, including all these different things, putting limits on the number of migrants that can cross the border. But then you just have the politics of all of this. And the politics are that Republicans are simply hamstringed um, by their base, by former President Trump, and by even their own ability to, to switch it and, and turn it and change their minds based on what they think is the, is the political price that they might pay. Luke, what can you tell us? I know you've been reporting on this. Right, yeah, I think uh, Yamich hit, hit all the, the main points here. I do think in addition to the power of Donald Trump, it shows the power of some of Trump's allies on Capitol Hill, specifically Marjorie Taylor Greene, who told Speaker Johnson point blank, if you put this border bill on the floor, I will introduce the motion to vacate you from the chair. So that threat was hanging over Johnson's head and really uh, uh, put the pressure on Republicans to block, to try to block this deal. At the same time, Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to be appointed as one of the impeachment managers against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. So you can sort of see who's wielding the power here in the Republican Party. It's not people like James Langford who negotiated for months and months to get a bipartisan deal. It is the people who are carrying out Trump's orders and his wishes on Capitol Hill for these hardline immigration stances. All right, Luke, let's be extra naive or idealistic and forget Marjorie Taylor Greene and Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump and even Mike Johnson. Put in perspective for us, because we have not seen the details in this bill, how big of a shift would this Senate bill be for America's immigration policy? Oh, it would be absolutely impactful. Um, now, I think it would be, It's. A, I actually think it's a very conservative bill. Um, typically, in these deals in the past, uh, uh, Republicans have had to give up something to the Democrats, like a pathway to citizenship for the Dreamers. That's not in this bill. What was in this bill is an almost immediate shutdown of the border. In fact, if it was to be signed into law, the border would be shut down the very next day until 
until crossing levels went way down. And then they would reopen these hearings and these screenings. It would give a ton of money to actually making the immigration system work and having enough agents and enough judges and enough lawyers to process these cases in a fair and humane way. While at the same time, if levels got up high enough, it would shut the border down again. Uh, it did not allow 5,000 people into the country every day uh, with no questions asked. It was, it was very much misrepresented uh, by many on the right. Um, so, yes, this had a tremendous impact on the border, but its prospects look very dim right now. It appears that almost no Republicans are going to support it. And, in fact, even James Langford was indicating that all the political pressure against him was getting to him, and he himself might not even vote to put the bill on the floor. That is bananas. Uh, tell us, Luke, how do you think this impeachment vote uh, on Mayorkas is going to go down? Republicans have a very narrow margin. I think they have the votes to impeach Mayorkas. Again, they have not put a case forward where there are any actual high crimes or misdemeanors, which is the constitutional standard for impeachment. The, the Constitution actually names treason and bribery and, you know, actually criminal offenses for impeachment. In this case, we really have the Republicans are dissatisfied with the state of the border. And instead of embracing this border bill, they want to blame the Homeland Security Secretary they say he has failed to implement the laws, and so they are going to vote to impeach him. As best of my knowledge, there is only one Republican in the House who has said he will not go along with it. And if those, are, if those numbers are correct, then they will have the votes for impeachment. So one more time so everyone understands. We have seen no evidence of high crimes or misdemeanors on the part of Secretary Mayorkas. And at the same time, this bill in the Senate has all sorts that would solve what Republicans' issues are in the border. And for Americans across the country who are concerned about our border, this would address it. Dave, from a legal stance, you are our legal expert. What sticks out to you about this bill? Well, the bill is conservative, as Luke said. I mean, if this came out under Donald Trump's presidency, uh, they would campaign on it. They would pass it faster than they confirm Amy Coney Barrett. They'd have a Rose Garden <laughs> ceremony with a banner that said mission accomplished. And then Trump would say, Mexico will pay for all the expenses. But here, uh, this is all politics. And one thing that Speaker Johnson is doing is saying that President Biden can do this on his own. He doesn't need a law to pass. But that's not accurate because there is a provision of the immigration law that was passed in 1952 that allows people who enter the United States to get asylum. They, If they get here, they get asylum. That's a southern border. And that's why Donald Trump could not shut down the southern border, even though he said he was going to. And that's why Joe Biden cannot do that on his own. But you know what can shut down the southern border? This legislation. And yet the Republicans won't pass it. That's because it's all about show and no go. OK, but there are some people that actually understand what's happening at the border. And I want to talk about them because today the Union for Border Patrol officers endorsed the bipartisan bill, saying it would drop illegal border crossings nationwide. This union endorsed Donald Trump in 2020. What does that tell you, Yamish, about the bill and Trump's opposition to it? What it tells you is that this is, as Luke said, and I think we need to underscore, it is not just a conservative border security bill. It is likely the most conservative border bill that we've seen in modern political history. Democrats here gave up so much. They really did move to the right. This is, this is a signal of a major shift to the right for Democrats and for President Biden when it comes to border security. So when you look at this union and saying, hey, we endorse this, it tells you that the, that the details of the bill really are in favor of people who have wanted stricter border um, rules and, and stricter border security. That being said, it really goes back to the idea that we're in election year. We are in an election year in 2024, and former President Trump is wielding the power here. And while House Speaker Mike Johnson has said he's calling the shots, he's in charge, it's pretty clear that, that Trump and his allies really do have the final say here. So it tells you that it's not really about what's in the bill, because maybe in, in, in the next year, if former President Trump gets reelected, maybe he will resurrect this bill or even something more conservative and say, hey, this is a big win, but do it now. Don't do it. Don't do it while the Democrats have the power. Well, then the challenge for Joe Biden right now is to figure out how to inform the American people of exactly what is in this bill and the Republicans that are blocking it. Let's. We have 
a strong economy. We don't need me to go through the data. Joe Biden is now messaging. The media is talking about it. Even Fox News as of Friday has acquiesced and said, we have a strong economy. Janet Yellen is saying it. Jay Powell is saying it. Why is it that when the, when Americans are polled and it was last month, they're crediting Donald Trump and saying he would be better? Explain this. Well, let's, let's level set and contextualize, uh, Stephanie, and thanks for having me on the show uh, for a deeper conversation about this. Look, it, it, let's, let's, let's look at historically what happens. It, Republicans historically do always, uh, uh, the way you ask it, you know, who you trust more to deal with the economy, Republican or Democrat generically, or, you know, the Republicans have historically had an advantage of that. And going, for, going into 2012, Working on the Obama campaign, when we asked, you know, who would who would do a better job on the economy, Mitt Romney or or Barack Obama, Mitt Romney had a huge advantage uh, around who would handle the economy the, the economy better. Where where uh, where Obama had, and I think where Joe Biden is going to have advantages, is when you start di di diving down and sort of who will fight more for working class people, who will fight more for middle class. And that's where we drove the conversation in 2011 around uh, around around the economy. So there is a conversation to be had about the economy. I think the president has had this conversation about the economy, he has to try to try to inoculate uh, as much as possible Republicans' historical advantage on the economy. But then to your point, he has a good story to tell about the economy. But at the same time, just like we saw in the midterm election, if the election is simply about yeah, inflation and or the border, which Republicans want it to be about, Democrats will absolutely get their 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 butts whipped. But what you'll see, hopefully, is that it's about more than just the economy and more than just the borders, right? What you don't see in there is is who's who's who do you trust more to protect, protect democracy? Who do you trust more to protect women's reproductive freedoms? Who do you trust more on health care? Who do you trust more on education? The, the election can't simply be about one or two things, or in fact, Republicans will have an advantage. But, Cornell, but what we saw in the midterms, but what we saw in the midterms is that when you expand that conversation, voters, in fact, have multiple variables decide how they vote. But why would Democrats get their butts whipped on immigration and the economy? We have a strong economy, and right now, it's Donald Trump who's blocking, who, who's pushing Republicans in the Senate and the House to block an immigration bill. Well, one, and, 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 I, and my, my friend on the other side can speak this, too. Like, if you look underneath the data, though, Stephanie, most of the, 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 the voters driving the concern about the border, for example, example are core Republican voters. Right, core Republican, and, and and if you watch Fox, if you listen to re Republicans talk, they're always driving fear and angst and grievance about the border. We're being invaded, right? That is their issue, and they own and they own that issue. They're driving fear about it. We're simply, that's why they don't want to, in fact, pass an immigration bill because it takes it off of it takes it off the political playing field for them, and they don't want to do that. But that's the thing, Mark. They're driving it with misinformation. You and I have talked about immigration a lot over the last couple of years. You've said it's a huge vulnerability for Joe Biden. He hasn't done enough. If you're Joe Biden right now and you have got a bill that Republicans could sign, could, that, that, that could, Republicans could pass and he could sign, and Donald Trump is blocking it and lying about it, what should Biden do? Talk about it every single day from now until November. I mean, I think this is a... Classic example of where this Trump is making it all about him and not if it's better for the country. He's just doing what's better for him politically. And I think that, that Joe Biden should talk about that a lot. And I think that I think you should. And I think the rest of the news should. I think everybody should, because it's clear that what Donald Trump really wants is chaos on the border. And 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 Joe Biden ran as the anti-chaos candidate. And that's what he's proposed with this bill. It's a solution to the problem. And as one of the guests said earlier uh, on the last show, uh, that if, if Donald Trump had this bill, he'd be running wild with it. Uh, he would be he would be running this up the flagpole and would be very proud of everything that's in this bill. So, listen, the, the thing that's interesting right now is that, you know, James Carver once says the economy's stupid. And, and I, I think that equation has changed.
I think right now it's tribe. It's 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 all about tr tribes, and the tribes just see it through the prism that they want to. But I think that it's going to be undeniable. First of all, economic news is always a lagging indicator with voters. The econ the, the improvement always happens before perceptions improve. Uh, inflation's coming down, but perceptions of inflation haven't haven't met the actual numbers of inflation. But that will that will self correct over time. And listen, if it keeps going the way it is, it's it's one of the most remarkable stories of Biden's presidency is not just how good the the, the economy is, but how good is it compared to what everybody thought it was going to be? My God, it was supposed to be a disaster, right? And and it's going to be one of the best economies that a president's ever run. And you would have, you, you would think that I mean, the good news for Joe Biden is he's got he's got nine months to tell the story. So you just said Joe Biden should be talking about this every day of the week. He's giving up an opportunity to talk to millions of people this Sunday, turning down a pre Super Bowl interview. I understood last year it was Fox. He wasn't going to do an interview on Fox, given that Fox News pumps out misinformation about him every day, tomorrow and yesterday. But not this year. It's CBS. Do you think he's missing a great opportunity to talk to Americans about these very issues? I do. Wow. It's a huge opportunity. I mean, it's a huge, huge. I mean, it's one of the biggest audiences, and, and, you know, you'll get in television the whole year. It's more than you'll get at the debates. It's more than you'll get at the convention. And it's not like it's a hostile interview. I mean, Super Bowl interviews are pretty friendly, generally, even if it's Fox. So I, I really don't understand it. And the problem is that that drives the perception that Joe Biden is, for whatever reason, avoiding the media. And then the conclusion most people are going to draw with that thinking that he's frail, that he's old, and they're trying to keep him away from, from even friendly press. It's a gift to his critics. I know I have no more time, but Cornell, I don't get to see you often, so I'm asking. If Joe Biden picked up the phone and called you tonight, what would your advice be for him? Well, I'm going to pull a, a card from, from Mark's friends. Tell him it's morning in America, right? You got to start selling the economy, right? The, the economy wasn't great when Ronald Reagan said it was morning in America. But he's but it, but it, but it was moving in the right direction. You got to sell it. They're not selling the good story about the economy yet, and it's puzzling to a lot of our friends.